So as we uh, continue our sermon series this morning entitled One Another, we're going to turn right away uh, to our Bible passage today, which is from Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 and 13. This is St. Paul writing uh, to the church in uh, Colossae, and he says this in verse 12, therefore, as God's chosen people, therefore, as God's chosen people, folks, that they should put a smile on your face, because that's who you are. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with one another, bear with each other, and forgive one another. If you have any grievances against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. All the one another's that we have looked at in this, in this series already, and all the one another's uh, statements we are going to look at in the remainder of this sermon series, uh, find their, their emphasis, find their strength, find their, their cornerstone, find their foundation in our relationship with Christ. You, you see, it, it, I, I don't treat you nicely or kindly or lovingly or generously because of something I stir up inside of me. Because, well, that pastor, Lee, he's just kind of a nice guy. No. The way we treat everyone in our lives finds its origin in the way that Christ treats us. And, and, and so it, it becomes imperative that I grow in my knowledge and understanding that, that I am God's chosen child, that I'm loved beyond measure, that I'm forgiven uh, to, to, to the extent of the far as the east is from the west. And as I grow in my knowledge and understanding of this, all of a sudden my treatment of the one another's in my life can, can begin to grow exponentially. Can, can begin uh, to extend uh, to those around me, those who are near to me, those who are far from me. Now, I, I think it's easy, and I think there are even uh, some churches that suggest that, that our one another's uh, somehow do originate within us, right? And, and you guys could come here every Sunday morning, and I could tell you, uh, love your neighbor, try harder. Love your neighbor, do better. Right? And I could tell you every Sunday, try harder, do better, work at it more. And maybe, maybe, maybe some of you would be really motivated. Maybe some of you would really take that to heart. And, and maybe some of you for a day or a week or a month or several months really would begin to love your neighbor more. Really would begin to, to, to show more forgiveness or more kindness or more grace or more patience or more generosity. But here's what I know eventually you'd fail. And, and you know how I know that eventually you wouldn't treat your neighbor as Jesus treated you? You know how I know that? Because you're sinners, and so am I. Every one of us in this room are sinners, and because of our sin, we don't treat our neighbor as God would have us treat our neighbor. And, and uh, I hope none of you are cringing when I say that you're a sinner, that your pastor leaves a sinner, because the Bible could, could really not be more clear on the subject and the fact that we are sinners in need of a Savior. King David says, uh, surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Paul writes uh, in the book of Romans, there is no one who is righteous, no <laughs> Not even one. And so if somehow we think that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grow in my love or my care or my kindness or, or my generosity to the one and others in my life, and I'm going to stir that up inside of me, folks, you're mistaken. Your love for your neighbor comes first and foremost from God's love for you through his son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, exactly how are we to treat our neighbor? That's verse 13. We're told to bear with each other and we're to forgive one another. And if we have any grievances against someone, we are to forgive them as the Lord has forgiven you. I, I like that, that, that phrase, bear with each other. 
That, I don't know if that's a, a word or a phrase or an understanding that we use a lot anymore, uh, but, but that, that, that idea of bearing with one another, that, that uh, being patient with one another, being long, long suffering with one another, that, that, that means a lot to me. And, and the reason that it means a lot to me is, is, is as some of you know my story, uh, my father was an alcoholic for the first 13 years of my life. And, and as long as I can remember, from zero to 13, uh, th- there was about 17 million reasons my mom should have left him. And, and yet, my mom bore with my dad, her husband. I, I remember uh, one particular uh, Monday or Tuesday, I think it was, it had been a particularly difficult weekend, and, and my mom was at the end of a rope. And my mom uh, has a sister who's just a year younger than her who lived down in Genoa. My Aunt Sherry's passed away now. But my mom uh, called my Aunt Sherry, and this was, this was way back in the olden days. I was, uh, I was 13 years old at the time, so it was, it was 1978. And somehow I knew that mom was talking to Sherry uh, about uh, the hurt and the heartache and the pain that she's been experiencing in past, especially these past couple days. And unbeknownst to my mom, I got it on the extension, right? Uh, that's when phones were hooked on the wall. Remember those days? And, and I got on the extension in the other room and I was listening to my mom talking to her sister. And, and, and my mom said, sis, you need to come and get us. I, I can't do it anymore. And, and my Aunt Sherry and my Uncle Carl worked evenings in Columbus, Nebraska, and my Aunt Sherry says, I, I can't come this afternoon. I, I got to work tonight. I can't come, but, but I'll come. And she couldn't come the next night either, so it was going to be two days. I'll, I'll be there in two days. And as a 13-year-old, uh, I, I started to talk on the phone, even though they didn't know I was listening. And I said to my Aunt Sherry, if you wait two days, mom won't leave because she'll forgive dad. If you don't come tonight, she's not going to leave. My Aunt Sherry showed up two days later. My mom had gone to Al-Anon the day in between, and all of her Al-Anon friends invited their uh, AA husbands to come over and to talk to my dad, and they told dad this simple story. Uh, Tomorrow, your sister-in-law is coming to get your wife and your kids. It's your choice. Ham's beer or your family. And, And by the grace of God, that was the day my dad quit drinking. Now, I, I wish that I could tell you when my, when my dad quit drinking, my mom didn't need to be long-suffering anymore. She didn't have to bear uh, with her family anymore. But, but about the time uh, my dad quit drinking, uh, my, my family's oldest son began to have his own issues, right? The, the, the kind of things that got me uh, kicked out of college, two colleges in one year. My mom never gave up on me. She continued to love me. She continued to be patient with me. She continued to be... She continued to be kind to me. Paul says that we're supposed to bear with one another. You know, it, it, it always surprises me when, when people come to me and, 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 the, and, and they're, they're just amazed that the people they love, the people that they marry, the people they work with, the people they live with are sinners. And somehow that sinner did something that hurt them. Pastor Lee, you're not going to believe what my spouse did. You're not going to believe what my brother did. You're not going to believe what my my parents did. You're not going to believe what my child did. You're not going to believe what my boss did. And I'm like, no, I'm going to believe it. I'm pretty sure I've heard every story. And here's what I know about everyone who's ever been in this church, everyone who lives in Northeast Nebraska, everyone in the world, we're sinners. In in fact, I'm, I'm thinking about getting all of you business cards. Right? And you can just start handing them out to each other. My business card is going to say this, Pastor Lee, sinner, I'll hurt you. Because that's it's a 100% chance of rain. I'm going to let you down. I'm going to let you down. I am a no good sinner. And so I only ask this. When I fail, when I make a mistake, when I sin against you, I just simply ask this. Would you bear with me? Would you be patient with me? Would you be patient with your spouse? Will you be patient with your kids? Will you be patient with your boss? Will you be patient with your coworkers? Will you be patient with your neighbor? Will you bear with them? 
I can't speak for all those other people I mentioned in your life, but, but if, if I'm the one who lets you down, here's the second thing I ask. Come and tell me. Come and tell me how I hurt you. Come and tell me how I frustrated you. Come and tell me how, how I disappointed you. Because you know what I'm going to ask for? I'm going to ask for your forgiveness. I'm going to tell you I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Forgiveness is at the cornerstone of the Christian faith. It, it, it's the thing that we celebrate that is our gift from God through Jesus to us. And yet, uh, we're, we're, we're great at receiving this, and we're a little bit slow <laughs> at sharing it with one another. I, I think p- part of the problem is, is somehow there's a misunderstanding of what it means to forgive someone. Uh, that, that somehow, if I'm going to forgive someone, I, I need to be able to forget it. Well, folks, our, our brains don't work that. We just can't erase from our brains uh, some hurt, some pain, some sorrow, so, some uh, difficulty in our lives, right? I, I forgave my dad when he got drinking, but I never, I've never forgotten some of the things that he's done, right? So, so forgiving isn't forgetting. Forgiving also isn't something that's earned, Right? That, that, that somehow, if I, if I let Trish down, I have, to be, I have to be nice for a certain number of days before I earn her forgiveness. Right? And, and it's like, well, you're on day seven. If you make it to day eight, maybe there's forgiveness coming your way. <laughs> Pastor Keith Christensen, who once served here, I think had the greatest definition of forgiveness that I've ever heard. Forgiveness is simply looking one another in the eye and saying this, I know what you did and you know what you did, but it's not going to affect our tomorrows. I know what happened and you know what happened. But today, we're making the decision because of forgiveness not to let it affect our tomorrows. And how is it we can bear with one another and forgive one another? Because Jesus Christ bore the cross. He he, he bore a cross for us, uh, an instrument of death and punishment that we deserved. And in his bearing of the cross, he won for us and for all of creation, for all of time, forgiveness. He made me his one another. He made us his one another's. He bore with us, he forgives us, so that we can bear with one another and forgive one another even as he has forgiven us. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I mean, the peace of God, which transcends all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in true faith to life everlasting. Amen. Would you join me this morning for a word of prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, uh, he, he is patient and long-suffering, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. It, it is stunning how amazing his grace is. May we, may we never fail to be amazed at the grace of God. And as we grow in our amazement, as we grow in our knowledge, as we grow in our understanding of this amazing grace, Lord, we pray that you would help us to bear with one another and to forgive one another, even as we have been forgiven by you. In your mighty and holy name we pray, and God's people said, amen. Amen.